Ay, modulo. Sasa. As soon as I reach M10. M10. M10 market is on the other side of the flyover. Bar Yaleo, everybody. Today we're walking over to Buru, 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 or for short, you just say Buru, B U R U. Um, it's another one of those originally a suburb development, just now been engulfed into the whole of the city. So I don't know if you can technically call it a suburb anymore. I would call it a hood. Um, but Buru, Buru, it's a housing estate within Nairobi City County and it's situated in a division called Makadara there's actually a train depot there I haven't used that train depot yet but there is a train that passes through and we are going to see it as we come up here on what they call in Kenya the flyover uh, these flyovers are the pedestrian bridges that cross over the main roads that uh, create a safe situation uh, rather than trying to cross the road by foot and as you're going to see people are going to hang out uh, looking for money sometimes in bad situations you'll see moms with their kids or people with handicaps and then um, once you reach the, the top of the bridge boom it's like a mini market and it's just a lot of action um, I'm familiar with this flyover and the one other particular flyover that I'm familiar with would be the one it uh, Roy Sambu, the one that connects Kasarani to Roy Sambu, I'm familiar with. And just like this one, it's full of action. So, as you saw when we were approaching it, there's street market all along. And, you know, this is just the Kenya I know. It's not like this that everywhere you go in Kenya old. or <laughs> everywhere that you go in Nairobi. But I can. Uh safely say that a good bit of Kenya is like this but and it's, okay it's the Kenya I know works, moving on my feet you know? moving in the community and that's where you get the good stuff man <laughs> that's where you get the good prices uh, versus going to a supermarket or a shopping mall every time you want to buy something so we're hanging out here on the bridge for just a little bit right here we're gabbing about the train being old and <laughs> that's the one that you can catch there at the Makadara station. So after we um, cross the flyover, we're gonna be in Buru Buru. So I'm just gonna do a little historical rundown on Buru Buru. It has some similarities to Emoja as far as location and in some ways about the early development of it. So um, Buru, it's a vast development inhabited by, as my source said, uh, comedically lower middle class people and then two sentences later they say that it's an expensive settlement so we actually we catch some sodas once we get into Buru and we actually discussed about the social class aspect Buru Buru is definitely a step above maybe a couple steps above Umoja as far as peace as far as the development style I would I would venture to say security is probably about the same however it's not nearly as hectic so generally you're gonna feel a little bit more peaceful and secure as you move around especially if you're an out-of-towner if you're a Kenyan that's new in Nairobi or if you're a foreigner visiting for the first time I can definitely recommend this Buru Buru as a place to go and take a stroll and to really get a feel for the city life so they developed the estate all the way back in 1974. So there goes our similarities with Umoja. It was developed around that same time frame. But as far as like the funding for it, USAID was named with Umoja, but I didn't see anything about a foreign investment with Buru Buru. So if there was a foreign investment and anybody knows about that, definitely feel free to comment so we can know a little bit more about our history. Um, the community is made up of five different phases, just like Umoja, you know, there's the phase one, the phase two, the phase three, and then the other subsections. 
So it's the same way uh, phases are basically a way of describing which corner of the hood that you're in, which section you're in. They call it phase. Um, the fifth phase was completed in the middle 1980s. So it was basically roughly approximately a 10 year development uh, process to get this community together. So um, it's about 85 hectares. It's eight kilometers outside of the Nairobi CBD. So again, just like Umoja, it's kind of a prized location because you're near the airport but you're also near the town and it's just convenient if you need to be in town for work or if you need to be in town to handle business or to do town shopping where you can always get the best 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 prices on everything so it's um due to its proximity it's always attracted a very diverse population from foreigners to government workers to the moderately affluent of Nairobi not the highest class but definitely not the lowest class so people that had a little bit of money it was a very attractive place for them to be on that note about making it an attractive place to be Buru Buru when it was being established they were abandoning uh, the rental housing policies in favor of having home ownership through tenant purchase and mortgage programs is you could say it's the, the African dream, like the American dream, and it's all about owning a home and being in a community of homeowners. And the more you live and the more you move around and the more you grow and experience, um, something that I learned. Hey, it's very calm. Why is it so quiet? Yeah, it's on a music, nothing. It's like no noise. A little over 10 years ago, whenever you live in a community uh, more like Umoja, where it's predominantly renters, the community does suffer. And you have to think about it if you rent a car or if you own a car, which car are you going to take better care of? You're going to take care of the one that you own because you, you take greater pride in it. You take more ownership of it. And hey, you're putting your money into it. So you want to make sure that it's taken care of well. Actually, it's a Tito market. So the same thing goes for communities. And that was really a driving factor for bringing in people to the community um, for the sake of investment. So you have, just like America, you, you have homeowners in this community that they've owned that, that house since way back in the day. Um, however, you know, the economy is tough in Kenya and it's had its ups and downs for sure. And right now it's very down, matter of fact. Uh, so as far as continued growth of the community or development of the housing, that brings in some other topics that we'll discuss. So uh, as our shop owner there just said, and I'm going to have his links in the comment as well if you want to support that guy. He's selling men's clothing and um, he was talking to us about how he made his initial investment. And he still hasn't made his money back and the economy is just heavy, heavy, hard like that for the local Kenyan. And some people aren't understanding that and they can't understand that until they really mix and mingle with these Kenyans and understand how the game go. But as he said, uh, this area that we're passing through, we're about to come out of it now, is called Mutendua Market. Everybody, as you see in the beginning of the video, I was struggling with the pronunciation because everybody was telling me Mtendua, Mtendua. But when I looked it up, it's actually Mutendua, M-U, Tendua. And whenever I saw the actual spelling, it actually helped me a lot with the pronunciation. So it's a real flavorful little market. I was actually reading something from back in 2018 when Sanko, Mike Sanko was still um, the, the governor of Nairobi and apparently he removed a lot of Vibanda um, around Buru I think that might have happened in within Mutendwa or it could have been throughout. Somebody definitely comment and let me know what you know about that. 
here we go with the Matatus. Let me try to storytell and narrate at the same time. We got the Matatu culture popping. I really like um, how we arrived at this corner and you get to see a really good look. I'm assuming this must be the stage for Buru Buru Phase 3. Um, you're going to get a lot of look at these Matatus throughout and <laughs> we're going to see one here pretty soon for Narcos, the, the drug lord Netflix series where they monetize <laughs> drug lord stories. And we've talked about these Matatus before. They essentially glamorize the things they get from the Western media and they use that glamorization for inspiration on um, well, a lot of culture, but in particular, the Matatu culture. So there it is. Right? And then Netflix makes millions of dollars off of telling their story. So I actually was chatting with our lady friend Claire as we walked about the reality of that topic and I'll bring that into one of my more political vlogs one day but to me it's I'll just say short and short it is mind-blowing how much criminality has been monetized for entertainment in America from movies to TV shows books and music and as much as the mural art on the Matatu is nice, sometimes I see things that I say, holy shit, man, you don't even know what that is. So anyway, um, we just took this little cutty cutty, this little place down the middle onto this back road here. We're really just looking for at the moment a place to get some sodas. It was a little bit hot. Our mouths were dry. And the first place we went, uh, the crew wasn't quite feeling it. So we're roaming around to see what else we can find and voila look at this art man and it drives me crazy when i do find amazing art like this because i want to buy like 10 pieces i would just love to have this art in my apartment out in coast and in my partner's house here in nairobi i would just really be digging to have the fish tank and the arts on the walls and you know I don't know if anybody caught the interview, but when I started transitioning to this more full-time Kenya lifestyle, I sold most of what I owned and that included my art collection. And, you know, I had art that I had been collecting for over 10 years. Some of those pieces hang hanged on my walls for such a long time. I sold it and some of it I, I gave away and a couple i sat by the dumpster even it was a part of the whole moving forward process so i don't know if this guy's online but i'm gonna check for him and if i do find him online i'll leave the link but art kona art kona i like the name too um really really humble cool dude I, one thing i really dug about this shop is i walk up mzungu with the camera with two friends one of the other friends got a camera felix got a camera you know and he didn't bother us about buying anything he just let us check out his stuff and i really really genuinely from the bottom of my heart appreciate that because sometimes when i'm walking i see something that i really like and i want to check it out i want to look closer but i don't because i can be really pressured to buy and if I'm not ready to buy, I'm not going to buy. You know, when I'm ready to buy, I'm going to come and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to buy. That's just the way I work. So I'm going to make it a point to go back through and support this guy one day. Because that thing you just saw, that lady, hey, amazing. That one's amazing. You see, I wish I got a better shot. But the, the water container, the Maji bucket, hanging upside down on the wall, he hung those as planters to put flowers to put plants really interesting one there baby fell out the window mama saved him very interesting art right there so i'm really digging this spot we we hung out here for a minute just soaking up the vibes you see he got the tires painted uh using them as planters also there's claire she's posing felix's are on-site photographer uh i've noticed whenever we're out vlogging he likes to pull out his phone and start shooting the pics which we definitely appreciate that so i'm super digging this area um 
just behind the stage he's super easy to find so if you want to come support this guy you should definitely slide on through uh i think i can move back to a little bit more of this buru history since we just uh talked about the tattoos and the mural art on them and then we just found an artist that's taken over a whole corner of the neighborhood right there um I think it would be a good time to mention that apparently Buru Buru has played a major role in Xing language, Xing, S-H-E-N-G, for those who don't know, and it's the Nairobi slang, so these are all, I almost want to say like, it's almost like hip-hop of Kenya, like hip-hop culture of Kenya, because you have the, the art, you have the lingo, you know, now at this point, all you need is a poet, an MC, and a dancer. And you got the four elements of hip hop for anybody that knows the core of hip hop that was born out of New York. So I'm just really digging it. I'm digging it a lot. Let's get back a little bit to what Boo Boo has to offer as far as the community. So uh, there's five phases in Boo Boo, five and there's approximately 1,000 units each. So when it was originally built, the, the plan was for 5,000 households. Um, pretty awesome, man, because my hometown is about 6,000 people, right? So Buru Buru alone is bigger than my hometown, just for perspective. Um, one thing that's, that's unique about Buru Buru when you compare it to uh any other crowded neighborhood or let's just say emoja since we're already familiar with their emoja has all that upward growth all that upward construction the apartment buildings the four floor buildings buru buru has the two-story mansionettes or um the two or three bedroom bungalows so you got the two or three bedroom bungalow or you got the three to four bedroom mansionette so you don't have the tall tall apartment buildings now i love rooftops so i appreciate tall apartment buildings for sure and i also really appreciate uh going somewhere where i can get a view where i can be on the balcony and sit down and relax and watch the neighborhood in motion I really dig that. Boo Buru does not have that, but it's okay. We'll get back in a few after this little conversation at the fast food joint. Hey, what's up, guys? So today we're in uh, Buru 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 Buru. Yes, Buru Buru. Yeah, um, I haven't researched it yet. All I know is what I know. This is probably like, I don't know, maybe my seventh time in Buru Buru. Seven. Yeah, I've taken transport over here and I've walked over here. Today we walked over here. Uh, I came with the crew, so let me introduce the crew. What's your name, lady? Claire. I'm Claire. My name's Felix. You can check me out on YouTube. I'm for Genius. Of course, everybody knows Felix by now because you've been watching the channel. So I'm going to talk to Felix about Buru Buru. Claire. Do you know Buru Buru well? Yes, I used to school here. Just there oh, okay. Oh, okay. So Claire, what what would you tell people about this Buru Buru? What would you want them to know about it? Okay, Buru Buru is a nice place, I can say. It is a very conservative area. Uh, you've seen the, just a few people. It's not that crowded. Um, you can say Buru Buru. Uh, anyway, I've been coming to Buruburu in the market where we can access the, the Tumba clothes. Um, we have the streets where you can maybe buy affordable shoes. I know places where you can get shoes. And I like Buruburu where it's a, market, it's a good marketplace, especially the area around Mutindo. Again, coming to this other place where people stay, again, I can say it's a, it is a very conservative place. It is a very safe place. I can say um, I've had so little about theft issues in Boroboro because yeah. most of the people here, you can say they are middle class people, okay, you, you can see that, they yeah. are middle class people, so issues about theft, about they are not rowdy, tattoos. Is, is that what you mean by conservative, that yeah, it's, it's yeah, not yeah. so rambunctious yeah, and all that? Yeah, it's not that rowdy. Yeah. yeah. That's what I can say about Boroboro. 
so so uh, Felix, what what do you what's your key points about Buru Buru? What would you want people to know about it? Like Buru Buru is more like um, a middle class uh, estate for the uh, average Kenyan. So so it's a really you can say a cheap spot, a really cheap estate with uh, more like uh, with more like uh, more established. You can say in some way, but not really to help the standards to you know. It's uh, a really good estate, though kind of expensive in some way because the prices are not uh, the Islam's normal, yeah, the Islam's normal prices here. But uh, it's more a cheap estate. You can get affordable uh, shopping uh, supermarkets around this place. It's a lot of them. Would you look at Emoja as like a lower middle class and Buru Buru being a middle middle class? Uh, in or, some way, yeah, in some way. I can, I can say yes. Because, yeah. Yeah, you've been traveling Emoja too, with me, right? Yeah. And, uh, there's a huge difference when you compare the streets. Yeah. Yeah, especially the sidewalks and everything. It's way different here than in Emoja. You can but, tell there's yeah, a difference in there's income. Difference. Like, you can tell people around Buru Buru they have a better income and they can sustain their livelihood. The more you can see people are hustling, everyone is a hustler like yeah, yeah. <laughs> So you can tell there is a difference. Even as you look at the people around, you can tell that these people are kind of well off, the other one they are kind of uh, trying to, they are struggling in a way. I'm not saying they are. I think, <laughs> listen, I think, I think it's way more of uh, like a, a preference thing because you can also get uh, like people who have money in the mode. Sure, yeah, sure, yeah, sure, yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. So many guys. Get people. It's all about the people. It's people all about, yeah, it's not about uh, the money That's why I say Buru is more conservative yeah. compared to it's way more like, chill. Yeah, yeah. It's it's more so lively. Proud, really. This is a more relaxed environment, yeah, yeah, yeah. it seems. It's more relaxed, exactly. Yeah, the streets are wide. There's yeah. Yeah. Really wide. a lot of pavements. Yeah, <laughs> Which, yeah. just here, like, like if this was a Umoja. Yeah, yeah. This this wouldn't be paved as likely in yeah. Umoja. So many, you know, like dust and dust over that place. I'll say the yeah. first time I ever came over here was on the flyover, the mm -hmm. same way we came today. Mm -hmm. And as soon as we went through, how do you say the market? In Tenda? Mtendua. Mtendua. As soon as I reach Mtendua. Here we go. Mtendua. Mtendwa. Mtendwa market is on the other side of the flyover. And the first time I ever passed through that market and then came out onto the other side of Buru Buru, I noticed the difference immediately. Yeah. There's just, there's more tarmac. Mm -hmm. It honestly feels closer to like a, an American yeah. type environment. But the, the tricky thing is this is, this is still Eastlands. And Eastlands has this unfair reputation, yeah. as if it all looks one way. Yeah, yeah, true. But it seems like Buru Buru is, is one of those exceptions to the the stereotype. So, yeah. Um, so even for a foreigner coming to Kenya and Nairobi for the first time, could you recommend to a foreigner to rent an Airbnb yeah, in Buru Buru? Yeah, you can recommend because. There's a huge uh, percentage of expatriates around Buru Buru. Yeah. There's a huge percentage of uh, expatriates coming from different countries and they actually stay around Buru Buru. You can just interview like random guys and uh, get to know maybe their insights and uh, just to get to know their thoughts about that factor because if you walk to around Buru Buru, maybe around uh, weekends mostly, you're going to see a huge percentage of white uh, people living around the Buru Buru rest. Yeah. Because it's way more secure, yeah. yeah. It's way more secure, affordable in some way, according to maybe some expatriates coming to Kenya. Because it's way more cheap compared to America. Right. Now, Claire, how does how does this um, how does this Buru Buru compare to Down Home? Okay, Buru Buru and Down Home. For me, I can categorize them almost the same place. Yeah. Buru Buru and Down Home, right? Yeah, almost the same almost class. The same. Yeah, yeah it's almost class. the same class. And you can see they're in the neighborhood. They're just but in the know, neighborhood. One thing, one thing uh, you, you get about this neighborhood is you're going to see a lot of kibandas. <laughs> you can just show them. Yes, yes, yes. You're going to see a lot of kibandas. You won't like it. You won't like it anywhere. The shops all along. Yeah. Now, to me, the vibanda, 
Yeah. That's many Kibanda. Mostly along the road. Yeah, to me, that's what makes Kenya Kenya. Like, if it was all supermarket and in closed shops, it wouldn't feel the same. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, for me, if I don't see them, I I feel suspicious. <laughs> But it's more like a Kenyan thing. You are going to see a lot of Kibanos around yeah. these neighborhoods. Even yeah. in most of them. You go to West of Heights. Yeah. You can see them around the... There, there's a bit. Yeah. I saw some outside of Sarah Center. Like, not as... It's not as profound as here. Mm -hmm. But they were still people on the side of the road yeah, doing it's things. More, it's more like uh, small-scale businesses. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it's more like, uh, you know, the low-income earners. Yeah. But I'm not saying... There are some people making money out of it. Because uh, there's also some good businesses around those kibanos. Yeah. We can pick up uh, kiosk, uh, selling maybe uh, chips and stuff. Yeah, yeah, sure. All right. So that's our our rundown on Buru Buru so far. We're gonna stroll some more after we take our soda and just show off another one of these Eastland hoods. So enjoy the walk. I thought I'd give you guys a little peace and quiet after the the fast food joint talk just so you can hear the peace of buru buru you know you could hear the birds chirping you heard the outside noise but it wasn't chaotic it was it was calm so i just wanted you to specifically hear that so you can kind of gauge a comparison between what i've shown you before with umoja versus what we're claiming buru buru to be is this more peaceful place within the city and hey you know it's just right next door um so it's just interesting how things can change. So kind of going back to the conversation about home ownership. Home ownership yields different results in the community than home rentership. So um, as we said, when the city was developing this area, they were pushing for the tenants to become owners or for people to join mortgage programs so that they could buy their home. Um, now with that, comes a wider range of infrastructure so Buru Buru has uh, medical institutions every major bank is there uh, multiple schools I think I have a list of schools here I can go over uh, of course churches and there's also a shopping mall and as you saw uh, whenever we first came in many many shops and as you're seeing now there's there's still many shops and of course umoja has some of those things too but umoja doesn't have a mall and uh, umoja doesn't have major banks and i'm not sure how the medical institu institutions compare but regardless boo boo has that all-encompassing aspect of infrastructure a little bit more so so as far as schools um, there's the East African School of Theology, super interesting. IAT, I should have looked it up because I don't know what it means. Shepherd's College, AUSI, another one that I should have looked up, I don't know what it means. And this one surprises me, Buru Buru Institution of Fine Arts. Sorry, Buru Buru Institute of Fine Arts because Africa is a more conservative culture and I've talked with some artists about this. I'm a little bit surprised to learn there's a fine arts school around, you know, that's more of a liberal culture thing. I think that's dope. And uh, Buru Buru also has an SOS Technical Institute and Unity College. Another fun fact, we talked about Umoja is known for pubs and clubs, and I can attest, I went to see someone recently in Umoja One Market area, and I was introduced to a road 
um, from their balcony. I didn't actually go out on this road, but uh, I don't remember the name of it, but the street is known for pubs. It used to be completely full of pubs. I'm gonna do a vlog on this place. I wanna tell the story about this place because I learned some crazy stuff about that history. Now, Boo Boo is different. They actually have no noise ordinance within certain sections to maintain peace for the residential areas. And the pubs and clubs are centered more towards the shopping areas. Um, so again, it makes it an even more savory family environment or for the working adult who's not working in the middle of the night like me, someone that's waking up at six, seven, eight a.m. to go to work, it could definitely be a better place in terms of peace and quiet and, and general sense of calm. I touched on it for a moment earlier, just about economic struggles and it, uh, how it's affected development on this side as the decades have gone. So since Buru Buru's completion, it has experienced some massive constructions and extensions, and many of them do not follow the guidelines and regulations that were originally prescribed for the development of the neighborhood in regards to site coverage and the, the plot ratio criterias. Um, research has shown that about 60% of extensions on properties in Buru uh, do not conform to construction laws of the estate, while only 35% of the development work has been done within professional guidelines. Um, but one thing is for sure that I've learned about Kenyans, Kenyans will be Kenyan. They're going to do what they need to do. They're going to adapt to their situation. And, you know, regulation is... I would say still in a, a bit of a development phase. Uh, I don't know if really that's quite the right word, but there's growing pains. Let me just say there's some growing pains happening here. So, you know, in the US, in my small, small community, if you started building a small structure on your house uh, or on your property next to your house, the city councilman would come and say, where's your builder's permit? and you would be taken to court if you did not have a builder's permit. So, you know, as far as enforcement, things are, are moving a little bit differently here. So people are gonna do what they gotta do. But as you see, we've just left the shopping area and this is what the residential area looks like. So let's say, look to the right there with the blue doors. That's a, a two-story bungalow to me is what it looks like. Maybe someone's renting the bottom and the owner lives at the top. Maybe the owner's living throughout the whole house. As you see, everything is two story. So even if you have your balcony, you're not gonna be far off the ground. That's the one thing I wouldn't like. But what I do love is look at this sidewalk. It's wide. People can pass you. You don't have to move around. You don't have to wait for them to pass so you can pass. Um, significantly better in this aspect than Umoja, significantly. Yeah, I think you can really see the difference. And honestly, I, I dig Buru Buru. Each time I've entered the hood over here, it just strikes me well. It feels good. It feels calm. Um, I'm digging it. I hope you like it too. I'm gonna cut off this narration and just let you walk it out for the rest of the ride. We'll bump the music. And uh, I look forward to seeing you guys next time. All right. Peace and love, Kenya.
sun is setting on Buru Buru. And once again, the, the battery is setting on my DJI. We're just strolling it out, catching some more sights around. Tsukuhapa. We hope you enjoyed though. Peace and love, Kenya. What's Malele mean? Can you Malele? Oh, really? So I can say Diamond Malele. Thank you.